Hi, this video is going to go over Flowsum's data migrator solution. The tool is 100% built in Salesforce. You install it into the organization where you want to migrate your data from. The data stays completely within Salesforce and it goes org to org. There are primarily two use cases for this tool. There is sandbox seeding, uh, where as I said you install this in your production environment and you intelligently select a subset of data to push down to your sandboxes um, so you have all the related information and all that data will still work without having to worry about overloading those sandboxes with too much data. And it can also be used to push configuration data forward as part of your deployment. So if you have any data that is used as part of your um, metadata so to speak, uh, you can push that forward using our solution as well. <clears throat> in this demo I'm going to show you how we do sandbox seeding and how very easy it is to reuse all the objects that we create. <clears throat> So to start off our migration, we need to have a base object. I have started with the account object. So when we create a new, what we call data set, and the data set is the criteria around each object you're going to be migrating, you first need to decide what fields you want to migrate. You can select all of the fields in the record, or you can select a subset of those fields. Once you've determined what field you want to migrate, if you have any sensitive data, you can very easily mask that information by double clicking on it. And then it will put a random value of the same data type and format into that newly created record in your test or, or sandbox environment. So in this example where I have my revenue masks, I could have a revenue entry of 9 million in my production org and we will put something like 20,000 down into that newly created record. We do keep the same data format, so if it's credit card numbers, account numbers, social security numbers. We'll keep the format the same and just have dummy data in there so all of your testing and your workflows, etc., will still work. After we have determined the fields we're going to use, we then want to base our subset of information off of two different potential ways. You can say either grab me the first X number of random records it finds, or you can do some intelligent selection. So we have two ways you can put in your selection criteria in here. You can either select a field and put in a value, and you can do this multiple times to get a subset of data. So this is saying I want all the accounts in the United States, and I can add multiple fields. Or if I'm more comfortable, and I ha maybe I have some circle filters, I can actually use the WHERE clause in here. So if I want to type the filter Manually, I can put that in here. Either way, we're going to evaluate that and convert it into the filter language. So once we have determined what we're using for our data set, we now want to create our migration off of this. So we call that a sequence. And what a sequence is, is a list of all of the records that are going to be migrated in the order they're going to be migrated in. So what we do is, whenever you open this to modify it, we will scan your org in the background looking at all of the data relationships, um, parent, children, etc. And it will bring back some actions over here we can do to work with these existing objects. You have a couple of options when you're doing your inserts. You can do a straight insert which will create the new record or you can have an update existing and insert new. Um, as you can see I've already added a few objects in here. Um, we're going to add a few more to show you how it is done. So you can see it's done scanning the org, it did it very very quickly and now I have options over here. So if I want to find some more children to my account object, I click on the child objects button and this will show me all of the children objects that are not in this migration yet. I can click on one or many and very easily add those to the migration. Now that inserted this at number five. As I said when we do this relationship scan and we also know what the data hierarchy is so we'll know if this has any parents or any children, so we know exactly where it needs to be migrated to keep the integrity intact so it doesn't break anything. And you can go through and you can look for parents, recursive relationships, all the different objects you need to get in here. So once you think you have everything, we then come on a test to make sure nothing is missing, but also to see how much data we are going to um, move to that development sandbox. So we do that by selecting this view record count, this will take the criteria that we've selected in all of the different objects, um, fields, etc., 
and it will evaluate that and come back and tell us how many records are found for each object as well as the overall size of the data. Now this is the exact same screen that we use when we migrate. The only difference is this does not move anything whereas the migration will actually copy the records down. Now if anything was missing in here that is needed you would have an error in this log but you can see this migrated completely. Uh, it shows you the queries that it did. Um, now if it was a migration you would see in here the number of records that it retrieved and that it migrated. But in this case we only found these number of records for those two record types in here and the size is only 586k. So this is very small and we can move this to my developer sandbox very very easily without having to worry about my storage limits down there. Now that we know we can easily migrate this the one thing we want to do before we migrate uh, we may have workflows, triggers, things like that that fire off every time new data is created. So we allow you to go in and temporarily disable those during your migration by clicking on the setup target org. So you can determine what you want to turn off temporarily, what you want to apply it to. Once you click disable you can then migrate this data and now when the data is created in that target org none of these will be fired off so you're not sending off thousands of emails to people and causing a lot of confusion. After the migration is done you would come back in here click on this to enable it and your org would be in its proper state and the users would be able to do their day-to-day -day work. Thank you.